Hello, my name is Vito Bell. I'm a music major going to school in North Carolina. <clears throat> this is the fourth video out of five videos talking about the pentatonic modes. So this video in particular is about Z mode and, um, I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly or not, but throughout this video we will be covering three uh, main uh, topics, I guess. The first one is understanding and comprehending the mode. The second step we will be covering is practice techniques about the mode. And then the third will be an optional short guided practice session where I kind of run you guys through what works for me and kind of do a short little practice session um, and walk you guys through that. So getting straight into things, this video is about Z, G mode. And <clears throat> the best way that I've found to understand and comprehend the pentatonic modes um, is to compare them to diatonic scales um, and think of them as diatonic scales with notes missing. So we'll go over that right now. Let's listen to the major diatonic scale. All right, and let's listen to Z mode. Right, so in this example, we will be using the major diatonic scale just because um, Z mode follows uh, major uh, tendencies. It has a, it, it's I guess I guess it's kind of neutral, but it's easiest to use the major diatonic scale as a reference. Oh yeah, well law, it has law. They both have law. All right, so if you look at this graph down here, this shows. Z mode as being a major diatonic scale with me and T missing. Me and T or scale degree three and seven. Let's listen to that. So I find uh, that this is a very, very <clears throat> effective way of thinking about the scale this mode and visualizing it in my mind while I sing it. This is a great way to see that the leaps are in between re and fa and la and do. Another way to think about it is um, not just thinking about the leaps, but maybe it works better for you to think about um, the groupings of the notes. So there are two and then three and then one and then three and then two if you're going up and down the scale. Um, I, I guess both work pretty well for me. You know, um, on some modes, I like to think of it as being two notes and then a leap. Um, on other ones, such as this one, I like to think of it as in uh, um, just the, the, the skip. I like to just kind of hear it rather than think two, skip, three, skip, one, skip, three, skip, two, skip, you know. Um, but this is all just food for thought it is really just whatever works best for you. So... One additional amazing tool we have for thinking about um, and conceptualizing the pentatonic modes is the black key approach. So any of the pentatonic modes um, can be played only using the black keys of the piano. Um, this one in particular um, uses the D sharp black key on the piano. So if you look at a piano, we'll use this one down here and you play D sharp, and then you play every note, um, actually this is a, a C sharp, I'm sorry, I must have pressed uh, D rather than C when I was typing this out. Um, so if you play C sharp, and every black key within that octave, you will have Z mode. Let's demonstrate that. And uh, if you watch the keyboard down here while I play this example up here, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, let's do that again. So this is a really great way to just sit down at the piano and just have it right in front of you. You know exactly where it starts. Let me just change this here. 
and um, it, it's a really, really great way to practice it and a really great way to understand it and think about it during the day. So one way you could test yourself is if you had flashcards that said, which pentatonic mode is the C-sharp pentatonic mode using the black key approach? You can kind of think about that throughout the day and use this as a tool to help you understand it um, and help you uh, figure out how to quickly find it on the piano. Um, whenever I practice this with a piano, um, I definitely pretty much exclusively use the black key approach when practicing these modes. So um, I believe that this concludes our first section of this video. Moving on to the second section of the video, talking about practice techniques for this mode, and I guess you could say all the other ones, or just anything. So, <clears throat> I like to start off by listening to it a whole lot. I just, I just listen over and over and over again, and listen to it until I hear, clearly hear the skips in between the groupings of notes. Let's do that again. Great, yeah, so I like to hear the skips, and once you get to the point where you can hear how this one sounds differently than the others, or different from the others, and you can clearly hear the skips and the groupings of notes, then you are well on your way to understanding and memorizing this scale, this mode. So. Um, after I sing, or I, sorry, pardon, pardon me, after I play this on the piano and listen to it a whole lot, then I'll start singing while playing it at the same time. <clears throat> after that, I try to phase the piano out of things as quickly as possible to where I'm just singing it on my own. Um, that's the best way to practice this, is just singing it without the piano. Um, of course, you always want to check yourself just to be sure, but the best way you can learn this is to get rid of the piano as quickly as possible. If you think of the piano as being sort of a, um, a training wheel for your uh, learning and understanding of this scale, um, then definitely the best way to learn uh, is to get rid of the training wheel as fast as possible. Um, that helps me learn, and I'm, I'm sure it will help you learn as well. So... Um, getting into the third part of this video is the optional guided practice session. So let us begin. At any point in time, you can um, pause this video and work things out on your own and then join back in later once you feel comfortable. Really quick before we start that, actually, I'm going to zoom out. And if you'd like, um, you're more than welcome to screenshot this. I use this um, sheet when I practice, and it helps me out a whole lot. And if you think it would help you out, then feel free to uh, take a screenshot of this and use it whenever you like. All right, so getting into the short optional guided practice session, we will start with listening. So we're just going to listen to this maybe over uh, three times, three times. Try listening to the skips. All right. Now let's move on to singing it. You can start off with humming. You can start off with whistling, anything you like. Um, but the, the, the goal is to be able to sing it with the piano at the same time. Do, do. So la do la so fa re do do re fa so la do la so fa re do. So do this on your own for a while until you feel comfortable. All right. So the next step is to get rid of the piano in your practicing of this scale. Um, I like to do this um, in steps sometimes, depending on if I'm having a hard time with it or not. And um, we'll, we'll do that uh, here for the sake of, um, of learning. 
So the way that I like to phase the piano out in steps is uh, I will only play do and so while I sing it. So um, I'll demonstrate that here. Do, re, fa, so, la, do, la, so, fa, re, do. That's a really great way um, that I practice this scale. And um, uh, another thing you can do is sing kind of ahead of the piano, or I guess play the piano maybe a half a beat behind yourself while you're singing. So it's almost like you're singing on your own, but you're still checking each pitch after you sing it. I'll demonstrate that here as well. Do, oh, do, pardon me. <laughs> do, re, fa, so, la, do. So fa re do. So if you could hear, I play the piano about a half a beat behind myself singing, and that helped me check each pitch while I was singing it. So it's almost like you're on your own, but not really. And um, like I said earlier, eventually the goal is to be able to just sing it without the piano. So. Um, I believe that this concludes our guided practice session on Z mode, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, before the video ends, I'd like to go over several little, um, I guess, thoughts about practicing this mode and about the modes in general. Um, so, first of all, this, this video is um, supposed to be um, kind of... Uh, an intro for your own thinking. This is not supposed to be the only thing that you do. It's definitely not the only thing that I do. I kind of use as many things as I can um, as tools to generate uh, a better understanding in my mind. So um, overall, just like the training wheels of the piano, this should be a training wheel. We should be getting away from this kind of practicing as quickly as possible in order to just go right into having an understanding of this um, musically and just understanding the way it sounds and the way it feels and um, that kind of superior understanding and comprehension is what we're heading towards and eventually tools like this video um, should become obsolete um, in our practicing so um, moving past that um, I hope that this has helped you create your own ideas for practicing you know um, everyone has their own things that work for you you know and these are some things that work for me, and just because they work for me doesn't mean they, they work for you. So don't don't feel disappointed in, in yourself if this kind of practice approach does not appeal to your learning, um, your, what, what you like to learn, how you like to learn. So don't, don't feel bad if this video does not appeal to that. Um, use this as an inspiration to create your own video. You know, um, I really like using MuseScore for these, and um, I would suggest if you're curious uh, about creating your own practice routine, then MuseScore is a really great way and a free way to uh, kind of come up with your own practice sheets and have them stored digitally. So um, other than that, you can do this at any time of the day, um, you know, whether on the bus or going from class to class, you can think to yourself, hmm, which scale, which pentatonic mode is the C-sharp mode using the black key approach or the F-sharp mode or the G sharp mode. You can do any of those things while you're running around. You can think about which um, which pentatonic mode is missing me and T. And you could either make flashcards, you could just think about it, and that's a really, really awesome way to memorize these as well. So I believe that this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Other than that, good luck in your practicing and your learning, and I hope you have a nice day and stay safe. Thank you.